Hey again guys and welcome back. I want to start this video off with an apology. It'll be a bit longer and a bit more wordy than the other videos in this series, but we're talk tackling the subject of analog read and analog write, and for a beginner it requires a little bit of background to really understand what's going on. I don't want that to scare you though. If you're not interested in learning why it works like that, just use the context, just use the, the reference, and just use the program we're going to build together. You don't need to know how it works. But for those of you who want to know how it works, we're going to go through that today. In episode four, we talked about how we can use a digital pin to read and write digital signals. So basically use ons or offs. Basically on our Uno, which is the one I recommend using, it was a 5 volt or a 0 volt signal. But now, if we feed in a signal that does not look like an on or off, but it looks something like this instead, we could still do this with a digital read and write. There are certain voltage thresholds where the Arduino will interpret the signal as a high or a low. So let's say we've got our 5 volt up here and our 0 volt there. The Uno is a 5 volt device, so it will see anything above about 3 volts as a high. And it'll see anything below about 1.5 volts as a low. And so if the Arduino happens to sample at this point here, it will think that this is somewhere in the middle and it may decide to read it as a high or a low. If it samples somewhere here in the signal, that's definitely past the three volt threshold, so it'll see this as a logic high. If it samples down here, then for sure it'll see this as a logic low. But what if we want to preserve the integrity of this curve? Well, then we have to use a function called analog read. So analog read will take whatever voltage value sort of between 0 and 5 volts in the case of the Uno and convert it into a number between 0 and 1023, which gives us uh, 1024 steps between 0 and that. This is because the Arduino has a 10-bit analog to digital converter. So you put in a signal, which is analog, so not just on or off, and it'll read that and convert it into 10 bits of binary precision. That number gets stored into the Arduino, and you can work with it. So basically, now we don't need to necessarily have a 5 volt or a ground. We can have basically um, 1024 steps in between. Instead of having one step, you know, one step here, one step here, now we can actually read these individual steps. Basically, if you divide the 0 to 5 volt range into uh, 1024 places, that gives you 4.9 millivolts between each step. So you can read this signal with 4.9 millivolts of accuracy, which is pretty neat. On our Arduino Uno, this can be done using the analog pins. So the analog pins are A0 to A5, which are usually all together, right here, A0 to A5. And that means we get six available analog pins because they're connected to the 10-bit ADC. And that allows us to actually sample six analog variables at the same time. If you need more than that, then you need to go up to the Arduino Mega, for example, which has 15 analog pins. For our cases, though, and most of the times, especially when you're beginning, this will be more than enough. Now, you can also write analog values, but the analog values are only using a 8-bit ADC with a step from 0 to 255, so 256 steps. This is done on PWM pins, which are usually the pins with the little tilde, the little squiggle, 
on your Arduino, but if it's not written, the Uno pins that work are digital pins 3, 9, 10, and 11 at 490 hertz, and 5 and 6 at 980 hertz. But if you remember, these are digital pins. So how can we get an analog value out of a digital pin? And this is where the topic becomes a bit more complex. These will output a PWM value. Basically, they'll be pulsing a 5 volt signal, like a, a, a high signal, 490 or 980 times per second, and they'll vary the length of the on time compared to the off time of the signal to average out at a analog value. We're going to look at all of that in a moment once we program this thing, but first let's make a sketch to actually use one of the analog pins to read and one of the PWM pins to write and see what that gives us. And this here is the program I've come up with. So let me just go through this line by line to explain what's going on. So first of all, we know we are going to do an analog read and an analog write. So that means that we need to define some analog pins and some PWM pins to use. So this first line up here, we define pin we read as an integer, and we say that's A0. Remember, the pins we can use are A0 through A5. So this is the analog pin that we will read from. Then we define what we're going to write from. So we define int pin we write as pin 10. This is one of the available PWM pins on an Arduino Uno. So this is the PWM pin we will output to. Then we need to store the red variable into something. So we define a variable for that, which I call value. So int value equals 0, because I want it to start as a blank number, just nothing. So this will be the value read by the Arduino. And that's it for the uh, before the setup here. Now in our setup, we set our pin modes. We know that the pin we read, which is the A0, we want to set as an input. So we set this one, the read pin, to an input. However, the documentation says it's not actually necessary to define it as an input. But regardless, I wanted to do it. it makes me feel better knowing that it's there. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Pin mode, pin we write output, we set our write pin as an output. We don't want to read from our PWM pin, we want to write to it. Next up, this is the code that will run over and over, and this is basically as simple as it gets. So value, the variable we've defined up here, will be equal to analog read pin we read. So whatever's on pin we read voltage-wise from 0 to 5 will give us a value. So this value here will equal anywhere between 0 and 1023. So this makes the value variable equal to the reading on the analog pin. That's simple. Now we're going to take that and we're going to write it to our PWN pin. So analog write, so from pin we write, is that's our end, that's what that's what we're writing to. The value, so this variable here, and we're going to divide it by four. And the reason we're dividing by four is because don't forget even though this value will be somewhere between 0 and 1023, this one here, we can only write from 0 to 255. Remember, 10-bit read, 8-bit write. So it writes a PWM analog value to our write pin. Value will be somewhere between 0 and 1023, right? because that's the 10-bit ADC. But the analog write function only accepts a value between 0 and 255. The Arduino reference recommends dividing by 4, which gives us a number between 0 and 255.75. So if you take 1023 and divide that by 4, it gives you 255.75, which rounds to 256, which is close enough. So we're going to be missing 1 out of our 256 values. So this should work. Just need to upload this to our Arduino and give it a shot. So here I have the Arduino plugged into this breadboard here and I'll just walk you through my circuit 
So the first things first is our Arduino has USB power coming in and we're taking that 5 volts in ground over to the breadboard. Then we need a source of analog voltage. Now a great source for that is a potentiometer, just a simple voltage divider. I can divide this voltage ad infinitum basically between the one rail and the other, so it should go 0 to 5 volts. Then I'm feeding that signal, which is the middle pin of the potentiometer, to our A0. If you remember, we declared A0 as our analog read. Then I broke out the blue wire, A0, to this here so we can check with our multimeter what the reading should be. Then I've got PWM pin 10 to this green wire, which will give us an output. So let's see right now what our voltage divider reads. Set my multimeter to DC volts. We'll grab the ground off this flying lead here. So that's grounded. And grab the blue. So right now we have zero volts. And if I turn this, you can tell I have an analog voltage from zero all the way up to 5.66. It's whatever is being output on the USB. All right. Well, that's pretty good. So now let's figure out what our um, analog out is actually putting out. So I'm going to switch from the blue lead here to the green lead. And would you look at that? This is at zero, you know, 0 0.02, zero. What's the difference? Let's move this up. And as you can see, it smoothly comes up in voltage as well. Ta-da, 5.062 volts. So now you might be thinking, well, that's kind of stupid. Why don't we just use this to power our devices? Well, here is why. I'm going to grab a couple of LEDs, and the positive is the resistor side. I'm going to put one in here, and we're going to put one in here. Now I'm going to use this green lead and I will put it in the furthest one over here. Okay, and you see it lights up just fine because our potentiometer, remember, it was at five volts. Now we grab our potentiometer output and put it on this LED as well. And would you look at that? They both light up. So it's exactly the same, right? Well, wrong. Look what happens as I slowly drop the voltage. A barely a, a tiny turn of the pot has nearly put out this LED and this one is still going bright. I'm not even halfway through the sweep, this LED is gone and this one is still bright. And then I turn it down, turn it down, turn it down and look at that, our LED, we're almost at the bottom of the range here, we're probably at a couple volts, you know, one point something volts, we can actually check that and our LED is still running. So why is that? Well, there's a little bit more at play here. We're going to put our green lead in here. Look at that. We are only at 0 0.06 volts, 60 millivolts, and our LED is still glowing. Faintly, but it's still glowing. Whereas this one here is completely off. So we know that an LED requires a minimum amount of voltage to turn on. So how come this one is turning on at 0.6 volts? Well, for that, we're going to have to bring in the scope. Scope is now connected. LED is in the way you guys remember it. So on the multimeter, we have, you know, 60 millivolts. But if you look at the scope, we are in one volt per division here. And if you count one, two, three, four, five divisions, we actually have five volts but five volts only in these little spikes. So what it's doing is it's sending out a five volt pulse and leaving it off for the vast majority of the pulse duration. So that means that our LED, which needs a couple of volts at least to turn on, will turn on at that pulse, but it happens so quickly and so many times per second that it looks dim to our eyes. And that's the important part. This is not actually an analog voltage. Our multimeter thinks it is, but that's because our multimeter doesn't sample quick enough to see it.
So that's the advantage. You can use this as an analog output, but really fast electronics will not read it as an analog. They'll read it as a, uh, as a PWM signal. And so if I increase the on time here by turning the pot, you can see these waves are getting bigger and bigger up at the 5 volt range. And that's what pulse width modulation is. And in fact, pulse width modulation really refers to a term called duty cycle as well. That means that it's reading the on time and the off time as part of a cycle. So sometimes this will be represented as a percentage and sometimes it'll be represented as the actual length of the wave. But this is what makes it so we can have our LED turn on at variable brightness without actually changing the resistance in the circuit. So this thing is pretty damn cool and it seems to work and works pretty well in fact. The fact that we're dividing the value by 4 will mess a little bit with the scaling. You see it's very sensitive at the top there. And down here it's very sensitive as well. But this can all be fixed in code, in more advanced code that is. But all you really need to know how to use this is the syntax. And that's it. So I hope you've learned a lot from this. And in the next one, we will take advantage of the fact that we can read an analog value and we will play with all sorts of stuff. Hope to see you in the next one.